There's another question as well. Salafis are quick to throw people outside of the realms of Salafi. I mean, alhamdulillah, one, again, this question is old. It has been answered numerous times. With regards to when does somebody leave Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, alhamdulillah, again, that's based upon text. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that's why we have to go back to what? We have to go back to the fundamentals. If we learn, alhamdulillah, and if we learn from the Quran and the Sunnah, and we look at the understanding of the Sahaba, the companions, Ridwan Allah alayhim, this stuff is clear, it's wadi, it's not difficult. You won't be confused. Because it's based upon text, not just based upon, I like this one or I like that one, nor does your allegiance revolve around the personality or an individual. Firstly, a person can only leave the realm of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah if they oppose one of the fundamentals of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. From the proofs for that is the hadith of Al Iftiraq. When the Prophet وسلم, he said that this nation was split into 73 sects, all of them in the Hilfah except for one. If you look at Alhamdulillah, the understanding of the Sahaba, how did the Sahaba understand these Nusus, these texts? The hadith of iftiraq and other, the, other than the hadith of iftiraq. How did they understand it? If you look, alhamdulillah, when it came to those who denied Qadr, when they came to Ibn Umar, they said, a people have appeared, they denied the divine decree. Ibn Umar, he said, tell them, I'm free from them and they are free from me. Khalas. They went against one of the fundamentals of al-Islam. No doubt, they left the realms of the people of the Sunnah. The Khawarij. The Khawarij who, yani, their mazahir, the Prophet ﷺ, he said to the companions, address the Sahaba, you will look down upon your prayer compared to their prayer. The Khawarij, how did the companions deal with the, 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 the Khawarij? And as we said, the Khawarij, they were known for their worship. They were known for their recitation of the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, However, it would not go past their throats, meaning they didn't have understanding. It didn't penetrate the qalb, their heart. Why? Because they even kilab and nar, they behave like kilab, like doves. There was no compassion, no mercy from them. How did the Sahaba deal with it? The Khawarij, yes, they have fundamentals. Where do they oppose Ahl Sunnah? Yes, rebellion against the Muslim rulers. That's from their fundamentals. Likewise, from the fundamentals of the Mu'tazila. Likewise, takfiru murtakib al kabira alati hiya dun al declaring the one who commits a major sin lesser than shirk to be a kafir and so on and so forth. They left the realms of the people of the Sunnah, abusing any of the Sahaba. Anybody abuses any of the Sahaba, that's an opposition to one of the usul of Ahli Sunnah, Naam, and so on and so forth. So Alhamdulillah, these things are clear. When does someone leave the realms of Salafi? It's not up to you, it's not up to me, it's not up to our shaykh or anybody. Alhamdulillah, it's based upon Quran, Sunnah, with the understanding of the Sahaba. And the scholars, Alhamdulillah, have simplified these things for us. The problem is, no, it's not that the Salafis are quick to throw people out of the realms of Salafiyyah or Ahl Sunnah, it's that some of these individuals, they want everyone to be included in Ahl Sunnah. They want the Shia to be included in Ahl Sunnah. They want those who say Allah is everywhere to be included amongst Ahl Sunnah. They want the Maturidiyya, the Sha'ira, to be included amongst Ahl Sunnah. They want the Sufiyya to be included amongst Ahl Sunnah. They're trying to include everyone in the realms of the people of the Sunnah. And they become angry and upset based upon their emotions. When the people of the Sunnah, Alhamdulillah, they say, no, this goes against what we find in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu with the understanding of the Sahaba. But as for them, it's allowed for them to abuse, it's allowed for them to insult, it's allowed for them to lie, it's allowed for them to slander, it's allowed to, for them to make qad, and so on and so forth. La nihayah, that's acceptable and fine. Alhamdulillah, when you see the people of the Sunnah, they say, this is an error. So and so said such and such, that is a mistake because Allah said. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, the understanding of the Sahaba is that. This is from the religion. Imam Ahli, what did he say? He said, إِذَا سَكَتَّ أَنْتَ وَسَكَتُّ أَنَا فَمَتَ يَعْرِفَ الْجَاهَدَ الصَّحِيمَ الْسَّقِيمَ He said, if I'm silent and you're silent, when would the ignorant person know what is authentic from what is weak? If I'm silent and you're silent, and there's a man who's promoting misguidance, deviation, and bid'ah, innovation, ikhwan, bid'ah, innovation is more beloved to Iblis than disobedience. Innovation is more beloved 
to Iblis than disobedience. And both of them are bitter. But disobedience, when you come across a sinner, the sinner may say, you know what? You tell them, why are you drinking alcohol? Stop for Allah, you're right, brother. Big dua for me. Many times he's not going to justify that action. The Muqtadiya justifies it and claims that it's from the religion and tries to promote it and propagate it amongst the people. So if someone was to say that right there, Alhamdulillah the Sahaba, they would clarify mistakes. They would mention names. They would say so-and-so is mistaken. So-and-so has lied in this issue. Why? Because the goal is what? Preservation of the religion. That is the, prime, uh, the primary objective of Islamic law from the maqasid al-shari'ah. The maqasid of, of the sharia, the primary objective of Islamic law, the first one is hifd al preservation of the religion. And from that is arad, rejecting the error, no matter who it comes from. So the people of the sunnah, all they say, you know what, he's mistaken in what he said. Allah said, the Prophet said. And they get upset because of their allegiance. They get upset. Oh, how can you talk about the shaykh? You're causing disunity. Yeah, we're trying to preserve the mother. We're trying to safeguard and protect the religion of Islam. Like Allah has commanded us and the Prophet has commanded us. I heard the brother mention the hadith. Whoever sees a munkar and evil, let them change it. Let them change it. With their hand, if they're not able, then with their tongue, if not, they're not able, then with their heart, and that's the lowest form of Iman. So if we see a mukab, however, you see these individuals lately, in this time, because Alhamdulillah, the da'wah is spreading with Alhamd, and Allah has blessed the da'wah of the people of the Sunnah all over the world. Alhamdulillah, and the brothers are active out on the streets giving da'wah of the Sunnah in many of the cities. You see the efforts of CC da'wah, you see the brothers, Alhamdulillah, our, our brothers out on the street with Alhamd giving da'wah, inviting people to Islam, inviting people to the Sunnah. So they see the spread of this. Now because, you know, maybe it's attracting some of the attention away from those who seek it, you see them. They'll talk about people's mothers, their children, their families, slander. It's like maybe reading the sun you may not come across, you know, it's like reading a, a, a tabloid newspaper. Even the common people, when they hear that stuff, it's like, I would be these people are religious and they're talking like that. So look, they allow that for themselves, but when it comes to the people of the Sunnah who don't indulge in that, as we said, we obey Allah concerning them, even if they disobey Allah concerning us. If they lie upon us, we don't lie against them. Why? Because tawfiq comes from Allah. And if you oppress them and you start to lie against them, then you are falling into what they are falling into, and then you are madha al-dhulm. Shaykh al-Islam said, a beautiful statement. He said, al-adl, justice and fairness, he said, it's wajib ala kulli ahad. He said, it's obligatory upon every person as it relates to every person fi kulli hal, in every situation. He said, justice and adil, being fair. He said, it's wajib upon every person, meaning no one is exempt. The scholar and the layman. The talib and mada, the sheikh. The rule and the rule. Also as it relates to everyone, even the non-Muslim, you have to deal with them in justice, fairness. He said, in every circumstance and situation, we are commanded to be just. He said, He said, oppression is haram in the absolute sense. It's never allowed to oppress anyone, even your worst enemy, even somebody that you hate, you can't oppress them. That's why when they make up lies, for example, you know, they make up lies and they say ridiculous things. We hear, that, Alhamdulillah, I don't think that we're blind, we don't hear what's being said. Just because we're not on Instagram or we're not on Facebook and the, the like of these forums. We hear it, but we, we choose to ignore it. Why? Because Alhamdulillah, it doesn't affect us. Like for example, the lie, when they said, you know, the brother, he pulled a gun on a Muslim. We have, I have the shahada, the testimony of the brother involved. He said, that's a lie and slander. But that's all they have. But don't pay attention to them. Ignore them. Keep moving with your da'wah. They want to sidetrack you. They want to busy you with qil and qal, and they want to bring you into the gutter where they reside. Alhamdulillah, you're busy with what? Learning. You're trying to learn Quran, memorize ayat. You're trying to learn a hadith. You're trying to implement them. Yes, we have shortcomings. We have tafsir. We're trying to overcome those mada, those deficiencies. No doubt about it. None of us are malaika. We're not angels. We don't have time for that. But continue with the da'wah. And you'll see, alhamdulillah, you will see the fruits of the da'wah. So that thing there that 
they are quick to throw people out of the realms of the Sunnah. Firstly, a person leaves the realms of the Sunnah because of the error that they have committed where they oppose the usul of the Sunnah and then if they are advised and they become arrogant and haughty and they remain upon that mukhalafah that opposes the usul and they are stubborn, yes, and then they leave the realms of the people of the Sunnah and the Jama'ah. Now, with knowledge, walillah, alhamdulillah, minna, wa subhanakallahu wa bihamdika, shalla wa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfirullah wa tuwilayk. Wa jazakum wa khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.